Hey guys, I'm John and I'm back to show you a bit more about Chaos Destruction in Unreal Engine 5. So I've just opened another first person template project here and I'm going to get started this time by fracturing this piece of mesh over here. Uh, I'm just going to go to fracture mode, go new, and uh, select uniform. And I'll make this into about 300 pieces. And select fracture. And I'm going to go back to select mode and uh, just turn off show bone colors. All right, and what I want to do in this video is show you how to create a physics field that uh, emulates an explosion or a bomb. So I'm going to right click here in my content browser, make a new blueprint. Uh, I'm going to go to all classes here and search for a field system actor. And I'll call that bomb underscore BP. And I'll open that up here and uh, the first thing I want to do is define an area for the bomb to encompass. So I'm going to make a sphere collision. And the default size here is uh, 32 radius. I'm going to set this to maybe like 200. And I'm going to go to the event graph and I'll create a custom event. I'm going to call this explode. Um, and before I make the physics field here, I'm just going to quickly add a couple things here. I'm going to spawn emitter at location. And we'll just use the starter content uh, explosion particle system. And I need a location here, so I'll say get actor location. We'll plug that in. And I'll set the scale here a bit bigger, maybe three in all the axes. And then uh, next thing I'm going to do here is play sound at location. We'll use the starter content again, the explosion cue. And I'll plug in this uh, same actor location. Okay, now I'm ready to create the uh, physics field part. So I'm going to drag in the field system component here. And I'll drag off of that and say add transient field. Okay, and for this, I'm going to say uh, enable field and set the physics type to external strain. And now I have to define the field. And uh, it's not as easy as just plugging in, say, the extents of our sphere collision. We have to first uh, make a field out of that. And so I'm going to add another component here called a radial falloff. And we'll set up the easiest kind of field here first. Um, the radial falloff I can drag into the graph here, drag off of that and say set radial falloff and get this uh, field function here. And I can define here uh, magnitude and uh, range and uh, the radius and position for this field. So I'll start here with the uh, radius and position. So what I'll do is drag in my sphere for my sphere collision. For the radius, I'll drag off that and say uh, scaled sphere radius. And the for the position, I'm just going to drag off the sphere here and say uh, world location. Okay, and the magnitude, what I want to define as a magnitude for my external strain. I'll just go over that quick here. I'll go back to the map and select my fractured mesh here. And uh, in the details here, if we go under uh, clustering, and we have a damage threshold here. So by default, these uh, d damage threshold is set to these three values, uh, these three indexes here, 500,000, 50,000, 5,000. And what that's defining is the amount of strain that will be required to break this mesh at the different fracture levels. And so I only fractured this mesh one time. And so the only uh, figure that's going to apply here is this index 0, 500,000. These other two indexes aren't going to be used because there are no other fracture levels. But if there, if there was, those would be the uh, strain thresholds to break into the next level of uh, the, a smaller piece. 
So for this case, uh, what I want to do is break everything apart for sure. So I want to set a really big number like 500,000 or more. So I'm going to go back here and uh, 500,000 will be fine. Uh, okay, and the last thing we'll look at here is the fall off type. So I'm going to select none for this one. So it's going to fill this entire sphere with the full amount of this magnitude. Uh, but you could define a fall off, say like linear, for example. Um, and now the magnitude would only be 500,000 right at the center of the sphere and it would fall off towards zero as you move toward the edge of the sphere. Uh, so for different uh, fields, different kinds of effects, you, you could use something like that. But in this case, I don't need that. I'm going to fill the whole sphere with the full magnitude of 500,000. Okay, so I can take this return value and plug it into the field node and that part is basically done. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is just make a quick and dirty way to explode my bomb in the map. So I'm going to go back to the first person map, drag my bomb blueprint into the map here, and we'll put it, say, uh, by the corner of this uh, destructible mesh. And now I'm just going to go to my level blueprint. And I can drag in this reference of the uh, bomb from my world outliner and just drop it into my uh, first person map level blueprint. And now I'm just gonna drag off this and say explode. And uh, to cause that to happen, I'm just gonna right click and say F key. And we'll use the F keyboard event and plug that in. All right, so let's try it out here. I'll press F. All right, so we have our explosion happen, but uh, it's just causing the strain so far. So uh, I could press F again here. We're not, we didn't destroy the actor or anything. Uh, and we can see we've caused this strain and this breakage to happen, but um, not really like an explosion yet. Nothing really went flying. There's no real forces happening. And so that's the next thing that we're going to set up here. I'll go back to the bomb blueprint. And what I need to do is add another transient field here. So I'm going to grab uh, from my same field system component here, uh, drag off of that and say add transient field. And for this one, I'll select enable field and the physics type will be linear velocity. Okay, so I need to define uh, the field node again. and for this one, I can't just plug in the same field here, the radial fall off. I need to define a slightly different type of field. Uh, and so I need here to add another component, a radial vector. Okay, and I'm going to drag my radial vector into the graph here. I'll drag off of that and say set radial vector. And for this one here, it's basically going to create a field of this magnitude that emanates from this center position outwards radially, uh, covering basically the entire world. This field doesn't define any extent or end limits. So uh, let's say I put in a magnitude here of uh, 1000. And uh, for the position for this, I want to use the same center position as my sphere here. So I'm just going to borrow this. Uh, world location here and plug that in for the center position. All right, so let's say I plug this in just as it is uh, to this linear velocity field. Uh, I'll show you what's happening here. Okay, I'll press F to explode. Now we get some velocity there. Um, now let's press F again and uh, again and again. Okay, and if I keep pressing it, we can see these blocks that aren't even near the explosion are continually receiving velocity. Every time I press F here, I'm pressing it a bit quicker now, and I can send these blocks flying. It, it doesn't make any sense why that would be happening when the explosion's over here. And so what's happening is the radial vector field, like I said, it has no end limit or extent defined, so it's happening throughout the entire world. And so for this kind of field, we need to introduce one more thing here, and that is a culling field. So I'm going to add another component here, a culling field. 
and I'll drag that onto the graph here. And same thing here, I'm going to set culling field. And for this one, we want to use this radial vector as our input to this field. So that's where we're starting. And uh, for this, uh, I'm just going to unhook that. The return value of our culling field is now what we're going to feed into our linear velocity. And we need to define what we're culling it, how we're culling this. So the input is the radial vector that emanates outward. And we're going to cull it by some amount uh, beyond that. And so conveniently, I already have defined this radial fall off here, uh, which covers the area of our sphere. So I can actually use that return value as our culling field. So we're going to stop this radial vector at the outer edges of our sphere. Uh, and in order to actually do that, I have to select outside rather than inside. Otherwise, we would be doing the reverse operation. Uh, and so that can be useful for other types of fields uh, that you might need to create. But for this one, we need to cull everything outside of this radial uh, fall off so that we aren't getting this linear velocity impacting anything except for what's inside this sphere. OK, hopefully that makes sense. And uh, I'll show you the final effect here. And so I'll press F. We get our explosion. Uh, we can, if I press F again, the only pieces being affected are pieces actually inside the sphere. Now we can see uh, nothing is moving toward the edges of the map here. We're not getting pieces that are flying all the way outside of the, the map, right? So that's pretty much it. That's how you uh, define a explosion style uh, physics field. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use an anchor field so that we can uh, create some other cool effects like blowing up the walls here and uh, say even the floor. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next video.